Hey, this is Steve Halleck from TikToking. I've got a really, really cool unboxing and review for you guys today. Um, but before I do, I just want to urge you again to hit subscribe on this video channel. It's really the only way that I know if people are enjoying these and watching these. Um, and it makes me want to make more of them. Uh, also, check out my website. It's TikToking.com. For those of you who don't know, um, I used to have a pretty cool blog there back when I was working in the industry. Uh, so definitely check out the archive post. There's some good ones there. And I actually just put up a new post yesterday. I'm going to try to update it every now and then, although it's hard to blog uh, terribly often. But also I have some really cool things uh, planned and that is where I will be either placing them or announcing them. So definitely check that out, www.tiktoking.com. Um, okay, here we go. This is one of the true titans of the industry. One of the best watches really uh, ever made, certainly in the modern era. Um, and it is a Kari Vutalainen Observatoire. So let's check out the box first. This thing is enormous. And totally gorgeous. So I'm going to move the camera for a second so you can take a look at this, but check that out. More on the box in a bit because it actually has some information about it inside. But here you can see this is like patterned after the crown of the watch. And you turn it to unlock it and then open it up. And inside you have your watch. But before we get into the watch itself, uh, here we have a pocket for extra straps and a cloth and that sort of stuff. And then there's some cool goodies in here that I want to show you. So first of all, this is uh, the actual observatory test certificate. So um, this is a basically a certificate that shows that the watch was tested and meets the standards of this observatory trial as per, um, you know, these are the uh, requirements and this is how it was actually timed. So you'll see that this watch is really all about uh, sort of precision and the history of precision within the watch industry. And so this is just something kind of cool. And then in here, uh, this is what I was telling you before. Let's see which book it's in. Uh, service log. Uh, it's in here somewhere. There's actually a thing that talks about the um, box itself. Oh, here it is. So it says, the presentation box that accompanies your wrist wristwatch is created from solid Swiss maple wood and decorated with five veneers cut from the Guillaume palm tree. Since wood is a natural substance, it's recommended to store the presentation box within a temperature range, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, so even the box is, is pretty amazing. And let's check out the watch. Enough of that. Okay, here we go. So again, this is an observatoire. This is really the watch that, that put Kerry on the map um, and actually was a watch for which he won the Grand Prix, I think in 2007. And you'll see why it was pretty well-deserving. Um, so first of all, these were basically made to order. I'm not sure that there are any two of them that are exactly alike. Um, and this particular one is rose gold with a silver dial. Let me move this box out of the way. Um, and it was ordered with these uh, really beautiful anthracite uh, Roman numerals and uh, Kari's signature uh, blue hands. Um, so you can see it, it's just a really gorgeous watch. Now, unfortunately, this is one of the most difficult watches possible for a video review because what we're dealing with with this watch is really the upper 1% of details and craftsmanship and it really can't be captured very well on camera. You almost have to hold one of these to, to totally get it. Um, but what you can see is just that everything is perfect. Um, and I think it's important to keep in mind, you know, all of us in our lives have 
things that we create and do and, and little ways that we cut corners. And if you try to think about having to make every single part of a project perfect um, and not 95%, but truly that 100%, uh, that's really where the true difficulty lies. And there's only a few people in the world that are capable of doing things like that. Um, so you'll most often see this watch compared with Philippe Dufour's simplicity. Um, and so I'll highlight some of the differences between those two uh, as I go along. But first, let's see what we've actually got here. Let me take this strap off so we can better see the movement. All right. So first of all, on the dial, um, you can see that there's two different patterns of this uh, guilloche. These are hand-turned dials. You can see there it says actually handmade on the dial. This is a real handmade watch. Um, so in the middle, you've got um, this kind of wavy pattern that really catches the light and, and makes for a lot of movement. Let's get a good focus on that. And then on the outer track and inside the seconds hand, you have this more grain of sand or pebbly um, finish, which is just perfectly even and uh, just also really excellently done. And then of course you have these portions with no guilloche engraving, and here you have these uh, applied kind of balls at the quarters, and the applied numerals are just beautiful. Just totally perfect finishing and uh, really pop on the dial. But of course the main draw on the dial are these hands. Now, uh, Kerry makes these himself and they're made out of gold and they're sort of a, in a breguet style but very accentuated in size and those are what immediately drew me to the watch. Uh, the hands and of course the lugs which we'll get to in a moment. Um, but just check out the proportions of those hands and they're just awesome. Okay, let's move on to the case. So the case you can see is a three-part case, but unlike most three-part cases, it's not symmetrical. So you have this uh, sort of shallow back and this big middle section, and then this rounded uh, bezel. But the real draw of this case are these lugs. Now, these are just the coolest lugs. Um, they're, they kind of uh, reminisce of old teardrop lugs, but they're even more exaggerated than that and they give the watch a really unique look that's kind of both vintage and modern, which is totally appropriate once we get into the movement, you'll see why. Um, but they're, they're just to die for and make this really special. This is one of the areas where I feel like this watch really jumps out over the simplicity. I find the simplicity uh, to be a little bit boring, which of course is to be expected for a watch called Simplicity. Um, but especially the case is is very um, just kind of plain, uh, whereas this still gives that classic appearance, but uh, it, it's really sort of more aesthetically and artistically uh, imagined, and I really like that personally. Um, so, all right, let's get to the good stuff now. So here you have a movement that's about as well finished as a movement can possibly be. Let's see if we can get a good focus on it here. Um, now, on the observatoires, these are actually old movements. So it's a peso caliber 260 that was made for observatory trials. So uh, between like the mid 40s and especially the mid 60s, um, there were all of these uh, kind of competitions. You can think of them as like the Formula One racing of watches and they were uh, different brands would submit their movements uh, or cased watches depending on the competition uh, to compete to see who could make the most precise and accurate movement and very often they were movements that were created specifically for these competitions the rigors of precision timing uh, necessitated things that were not uh, necessarily the best choices for mass-produced commercial movements. Um, so the Peso Caliber 260 was one of these 
competition observatory movement that was never made for commercial production. And it was made in, I believe, the 50s and 60s, maybe a little bit into the 40s. And Kari found uh, some of these old movements totally in parts. And basically what he did was remake parts. He put in his own balance and escapement and spring. And then he finished everything to, you know, the nth degree. So there is this uh, kind of mix of uh, old and new and vintage and and new that I really love. Uh, whereas you get to something like the simplicity, that's of course a, a totally newly made movement, although it, it's very reminiscent of uh, a Jeger Le Coult movement. Um, but I actually like the history of these, and I love that it's an observatory grade movement. You just don't find those in wristwatches. And then to have that idea of somebody taking this sort of fantastic thing from the past and then um, putting this expert handcraft into it is just really cool to me. Um, but anyway, you can see here the different finishes, especially I wish I wish there was some way to like really zoom this camera. Let's see what we can do. Uh, but the focus sucks. Well, there you can sort of see the finishing on the edges of these bridges, uh, the chamfering, the um, engraving, everything is just fantastic. And look at the black polish on the screws and uh, on the top of uh, the, the mainspring and this ratchet wheel. It's just to die for. Um, I wish you guys could all see this in person because it really is as good as it gets. Um, and you, it's really something very special. I find this watch to be really undervalued and underappreciated in the market. I think it's one of the coolest watches ever made. That, that combination of vintage and new is amazing. Uh, it's made by maybe the greatest living watchmaker or one of certainly a very small handful. And if you think of the fact that Philippe Dufour made 200 simplicities, there's only somewhere between 30 and 50 of these in existence. So it's also incredibly rare comparatively. Um, but of course, there's there's the whole sort of uh, godlike stature of Dufour that Kari doesn't quite have because Kari keeps working. Um, he is making uh, his new in-house watches now. Uh, he works with other brands. He's a little bit more accessible. So I think um, these watches don't have necessarily the unattainable uh, idea around them that a Dufour might have. But in reality, they're much harder to find. Um, so let me show you on the wrist. Uh, it's got this uh, deployant buckle. It's not my favorite part of the watch, but it's a gold deployant. It says Voodalainen. All right, let's get it on. Now, this is another part where I think the Kari really shines over a Dufour. I've played with several Dufours, and uh, they're a little bit small, and they're also a little bit boring on the wrist, which again is, is part of the point of it, but it's not 100% my thing. If you check out this watch, because of the way it sits where the lugs come into kind of the bottom of the case, it sits pretty high off the wrist, and it wears pretty big. Um, I think it, it's either 38 or 39 millimeters, but it, it really wears like a fairly large watch. And it just looks spectacular on the wrist. Um, from any angle, it's sort of, uh, you can just tell this is something really, really incredibly special. And all of that without it being ostentatious in any way, um, it's just a really incredible watch. So I hope that you guys have a chance to see one of these at some point yourself. Um, if, uh, if you're ever around me somewhere and I have it on, please uh, feel free to ask and check it out. And um, that's all I've got for you. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Also, if you go to my website, there's a contact button on there. Um, feel free to email me uh, anything and I will try to help out. And there you have it. That's a Kari Voodalainen Observatoire, and it's rose gold with a silver dial, anthracite numerals, and you're not going to see anything better than this. Thanks.